this episode, I'm going to talk about a new axiom called scale invariance. Remember, we would like to measure goodness of a bargaining rule, and we measure those uh, depending on whether they satisfy some nice properties. Those properties are called axioms. So one of the axioms uh, is, uh, that we're going to talk about is scale invariance. Uh, well, uh, before giving you the formal uh, description, uh, maybe it's better to describe uh, what it really means. Remember the utility theory. Um, it really doesn't matter uh, how much utility value player attached to an alternative. All it matters is relative ranking, right? Because uh, if you remember um, your you know advanced micro theory courses, a preference relation, if it satisfies certain nice axioms like uh, transitivity, completeness, reflexiveness, etc., and continuity, well, then we can find a utility function, a function that represents that preference relation, which means if the individual prefers an alternative A to alternative B, when then this utility function is going to attach some value to A and B, where A, the, the utility attached to alternative A is higher than utility attached to alternative B. That's what it means, a uh, utility function representing a preference relation. And if you remember, we talked about the utility representation is, uh, I mean, the, the, the utility values attached to the alternatives is, is, is not important because if a utility function U represents a preference relation, any affine transformation of this utility function will also represent it. Well, what was the affine transformation? Multiply the utility function with some scalar, uh, sort of a real number A, where A is positive, and add some uh, real number B. B can be uh, positive, negative, doesn't matter. All it uh, all I care is it's it's a real number. Well, then this is another utility function, which we call V, and then V also represent that preference relation. Remember that, uh, hopefully remember that theorem. Well, this is exactly uh, the property we are going to uh, incorporate into the bargaining problems, because in the bargaining problems, we create the set of feasible uh, payoff vectors, remember? Well, here, this payoff vector, uh, this, this set is generated by using the agent's, uh, negotiator's uh, utility functions. But it really doesn't matter how much utility they attach to each alternative. So if we scale up or down agent's utilities, meaning instead of attaching utility 10 and, and, and you know, to one alternative versus zero to another alternative, uh, what if they attach utility 100 uh, versus zero or thousandth versus zero. You see what I mean? So it's like if I scale up or down the utilities of the negotiators, the solution should also be scaled up and down uh, equally, kind of. That's the idea. All right. So this is how we formally define this property. Um, we first are uh, going to define affine uh, functions, but this time it's a bit more complicated because we have uh, n uh, players or the individuals, and so and and the payoff vectors have n dimension. So therefore, for each dimension, we need to define a fine uh, transformation. So what we're going to do, we're going to let uh, lambda, as a capital lambda, be the set of all um, lambda. So it's a vector of functions, lambda one, lambda two, up to lambda n. All right, so again, these are not real numbers, these are functions. So such that for every i, so each is for players. So for each player i, lambda i is nothing but a real valued function. It maps a real numbers into real numbers, and it's a positive affine function. All right, so the lambda is a vector of function where every component is a positive affine function, positive affine real function. Well, what is positive uh, affine function? Well, lambda from R to R is a positive affine function if there exists some real numbers A and B where A is positive, B can be positive, negative, doesn't matter, such that for every real number X, lambda IX is nothing but A times X plus B. 
okay? So that's it. Remember the utility, a fine transformation of the utility function. So here exactly, I am going to be taking the affine transformation of the uh, set of feasible payoffs. So for any uh, set S, which is a subset of Rn, all right? So it's a feasible set of payoffs. So lambda S is nothing but we are rescaling the set S. How do we do that? Well, we basically remember X is an element of this set. It's a vector. We just plug X into our uh, uh, function lambda, and then we generate, uh, we scale up some uh, players payoff, we scale down some others, maybe we scale all up or scale all down, doesn't matter. We can do this uh, for any set S with any uh, such uh, function, all right? Well, now the definition, the axiom, a rule, a bargaining rule F is called scale invariant if for any bargaining problem and for any a fine uh, positive a fine transformation. So here's the important equality. When I evaluate the solution of the new transformed bargaining problem, so here the transformed bargaining problem, so this is the original bargaining problem, f of sd is the solution of the original bargaining problem, and then I transform uh, this vector with lambda. Alternatively, I just transform the set of feasible payoffs and the affine, uh, sorry, uh, the um, uh, disagreement point D and then look at the solution, okay? And if this is true for any bargaining problem and, and for any positive affine transformation, well, then we call this rule is a scale invariant, all right? Well, example, obviously the, the my candidate is the, the buyer-seller example. We started discussing at the very first lecture. So I have a buyer, player one, x1, player two, x2, remember, 100, 100. And so this is the uh, set S and the D was zero, zero. Okay, so the question is, if we scale everything, well, what is the rule that I'm using? Well, for example, f is equal to arg max x1, where x is in equal to s, okay? So f of what? f when the bargaining problem is sd, okay? So in this environment, we know that the solution is going to be 100 for player one and zero for player two. Okay, so this point. Okay, oh, because it favors player one. Well, now we would like to scale it uh, in some way. How are we gonna do that? Well, let's scale player two's payoff um, you know, down and scale player one's payoff up, all right? Well, what does that mean in sort of real term? Well, it would mean the utility of player one is equal to, well, he's still risk neutral, but it's not equal to u of x is equal to x. Now it's u of x is equal to x over two, for example. And utility of player two is, let's say it's three x, all right? So uh, he doesn't, so this, when his surplus is x unit, he gets three times x units of utility, all right? So that's the idea. If these are the utility functions, well then what would be the solution? Well, the solution would be the following. Well. What is the uh, lambda S and lambda D? Well, here, remember the lambda one is one over two, right? Uh, I mean, X over two, uh, the lambda one X, which is a function, and lambda two X is in, in this framework is three times X, okay? Um, so because I am scaling up player two's payoff, and scaling down player one's payoff. All right, well, therefore the lambda is this, uh, one over two x. Uh, so again, lambda x is a function. So lambda x is one over two x comma three uh, x. Okay, good. Well, in this case, 
what I'm going to get, my S will be transformed into this. Player, remember, player trees payoff is now the maximum utility is 300, all right, um, 200, 100. And player one's payoff, the maximum utility is 50, so somewhere here. So this is, oops, uh, it's a bit small, I'm sorry. This is what the transformed um, set of feasible payoffs will look like. What about lambda d? Well, the transformation of 0, 0 in this case is exactly 0, 0, okay? So d is still the same, it did not change. Well, then what is going to be f? So f of lambda s, lambda d, again, my rule is this guy. Um, you know, give the, um, uh, the uh, give according to what player one wants the most. And here it's nothing but 50. Remember, this is one, my X new X1, this is my new X2. All right. Hmm. So the question is, do I have this property? So remember F of this transformed bargaining problem is nothing but uh, 50 to player one and zero to player two, obviously. So this is the point. So 50, this is F1, uh, this, and F2 is lambda S, lambda D. Well, again, zero, because remember, we are maximizing X1 only. Okay, so this is what my um, transfer, the, the, this, my solution will look like in the transformed game, uh, bargaining problem. Well, what was my solution in the original problem? It was 100, 0. Remember? So 100, 0. If I transform this with exactly this function, what would it become? Well, 100 times 1 half, 50, comma, 0 times 3, 0. So are they the same? Yes, they are the same. Very good. But remember, this is just one transformation. Uh, there are infinitely many transformations. And why I scale this down and this scale this up? What if I scale both up or scale both down? Or what if I add some constant C here and subtract some number D here? Uh, well, D is the disagreement point. Let's choose another uh, parameter. I, I don't know. Uh, e. Remember, the scale invariance has to hold for any affine, trans, positive affine transformation and for any bargaining problem. Here's just one bargaining problem, yes, but it should hold for any uh, affine transformation.